Um, there's, there's all this chromatic movement, and at the same time, the chromatic movement affects the quality of the chords. And if you're playing this music in a big band, you'll see all the time that a chord is described as being a flat five all the time, because even if it's just for one beat, because it's then leading to the something else. Um, so what that was, let's see, it was... So I'm going from a B7, a version of a B7, with a flat nine, to an E minor. So already you've got this little contrary motion. And then I go... So I'm then making the E minor an E major with a nine. That's actually a good way of doing it. So you're you're not thinking, you're you're thinking just moving, moving mm -hmm. voices and yeah. I'm thinking like I want not really this chords. melody. Yeah, not chords. Not really I'm thinking chords. I want this melody played. And then I'm like. So in this case, what I wind up playing, I know what I'm playing. I understand the harmony. So I'm playing mm -hmm. an E minor to an E augmented. Seven. Mm. And then this. Well, that takes a second. The E minor. This is a very passing chord. Mm -hmm. Leading back to the A. You know. Uh. That's a B flat, like B flat seven. realizing that these two lines, if one is in quarter note and one is in eighth note, you actually, it makes things so much easier. It sounds like there's a lot more movement than there is, you know? It's kind of an illusion in a way. It's a little bit of a sonic. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I add a lot of the same stuff when I'm playing rhythm. So if I'm playing rhythm guitar, I'll still add like this contrary motion. sometimes hmm. fill it in. So in this case I'm going from a B minor to an E7 to an A, but I'm going B minor And you just put the bass on and uh, right. you also put the bass. But you know, I mean I can sometimes you can, yeah. Yeah, I would do it. So rhythmically, you just strum, strum the, the... Well, you don't want to be too obnoxious with it, you know? You don't want to have it be too much information. You're still, you're accompanying. Mm. You know, if I'm accompanying, mm. I don't usually put in all that stuff unless suddenly there's like a, a break and they like, you know, mm. give you an opportunity to do something. But I might do... I'm sorry. And I'm playing two-note voicing. So mm -hmm. it looks like I'm hitting something on the sixth string, but I'm not. And and for most of the rhythm playing that I do, if I'm playing with a bass player, or if I'm playing with a bass player and drums, or bass and piano, I'm just playing two notes. Almost uh -huh. all the time I'm playing two notes. Yeah, it's like sort of Freddie Green style, but I know I've noticed that you 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 use uh, you move. Yeah. The voices. Yeah, I have a little more counterpoint yeah. than he would have. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a nice, very like nice twenties, thirties thing that I was talking about earlier, where if you're playing a minor chord, you might play then a beat of that chord dominant before you go to the next. You know? Okay. That's a very like I'd say, you know, 20 